Uh, Stacy, we would love to hear your story of how God has reached out and called you to faith. Thank you. So I get to talk about Jesus, which is one of my favorite things. And thank you for um, this opportunity and to be able to do this this morning. So I was, um, I'm the, the daughter of a pastor and the granddaughter of a pastor, but in the faith denomination that I grew up in, they did not do water baptism, they did dedications, which is why I'm here today. And um, at four years old, I gave my heart to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and uh, he has had it ever since, and I've loved him ever since, and I just want to briefly share just a few times in my life that uh, have been significant in my faith journey uh, and have kind of developed me into uh, who I am today. Um, the first one of those uh, was when I went away to um, boarding school for high school up in northern Michigan at Interlochen Arts Academy. And um, it was a small school. There were only a couple hundred students, but there were 42 different countries represented in that small student body. And so there were many beliefs uh, represented and um, many that didn't have any belief at all. Uh, and so I was in a minority for the first time. I was a minority as a Christian uh, and had a lot of questions posed to me about why I believed that and why I would want to follow Jesus and what did that mean to me. Uh, and I had never really taken the time to really own it, I guess, or think about those things. And so uh, I had grown up reading the Bible and studying the Bible and going to Sunday school and church and Awana and all those wonderful things. Um, but a hunger for the word, like truly eating the word, just enveloped me. And I, it's like I was so hungry I couldn't get enough of it. And so I read the word and studied the word of God and had an active daily prayer life. And my, my faith uh, was even more anchored and matured. And then from Interlochen, I went to Oberlin Conservatory, which was very similar to Interlochen, except a bigger body of students. But again, I was very much the minority. And again, um, there was almost a, a, just a flavor of, of uh, skepticism, of hostility in some cases uh, against Christianity. And so again, it was why do I, why do I believe this? Um, and so again, it was a time in my life where I was able to dig even deeper into the word and fall more in love with my Jesus uh, and be an opportunity to be the light and love uh, and hands and feet of my Jesus Christ. Uh, from there, I went into the opera world professionally. And again, it was a bigger stage, no pun intended, for uh, an opportunity to talk about my faith and to, to be in the arts world and to share why I was a follower of Jesus and what he meant to me and what the word of God means and all of those things. So again, it was another layer of depth and anchoring and maturity in my faith. Um, put my opera career on hold when we had our first son. We have six children. We have uh, five here. We have one in heaven. So we had our first three boys, Will William, Jimmy, and Alex, and then we had our first daughter who was stillborn. And the reason I bring that up is because that's a big that's a big uh, hit to your faith, right? Um, they call it the Valley of the Shadow of Death for a reason because it's a dark place. It's a hard place to be. Um, and so it was all those faith tenets, right, were like brought to the forefront of me. Um, is he good? right? All those simple questions, right? Is God good? Is God trustworthy? Is God faithful? Does he love me? Um, and so I wrestled with that. And I, even in my grief-stricken state, in my mind, I knew, okay, I'm going to become better because of this, or I'm going to become bitter. And so with my mind, because my heart was not in a place to make a decision at that time, but in my mind, I thought, I want to become better. I want to fall more in love with Jesus through this valley of the shadow. And so I took my Bible and I wrote down all the verses that talked about God's faithfulness and God's trustworthiness and God's goodness and God's love. And it, it again, I can't put it into words because it's the God we serve, right? Who can bring beautiful things out of the ashes of pain. I mean, I stand amazed. And so my love for him, even in the midst of not understanding, right? I don't have an answer why. Um, I believe he's sovereign and could have prevented that. And yet he chose for whatever reason not to. I believe he is good. And I believe he's trustworthy. And I believe he's faithful. And I believe he is nothing but love. And so, my, again, my faith, 
um, was even more deep-seated and grew and blossomed even stronger. And so I've been in the ministry for the past 12 and a half years. I've been a Bible teacher at Community Bible Study for the past seven and a half years, which is, again, a blessing that I get to have this privilege of coming every week and teaching from the Word of God, which I have grown to love so much. Um, and uh, I should also add that after our, uh, after our daughter in heaven, Gabrielle Rose, um, we had another daughter. And because God is gracious and he did not have to do that, we named her Grace because it seemed very fitting. And then we had our fourth son, George. Um, so, And they've been able to be a part of the ministry that I've been able to be blessed to have a calling in uh, all their growing up years. And so it has just blessed our family uh, continuously. Uh, and so here I am today uh, on this stage here uh, doing this other, another blessing, another layer of beauty to my faith walk, which is publicly showing the love that I have for my Jesus Christ, the faith that I have in him, and just a public declaration of my love for him, but more importantly, his love for me, which made my love for him even possible.